quadratic equations that are not in standard form, and people get confused about what we're going to do with that. And I have to admit to you, I don't know what math you're in right now, or maybe you're just checking my math. But having taught math from middle school students in Algebra 1 um, through math methods courses uh, at the university graduate level, the darndest thing happens that you'll get a student in, even great students, I don't want to beat anybody up here, but even great students, they'll see something like this and they'll be unsure of what they should do. And I get why. I, I really do kind of get why. But they'll see this and they'll say, well, I don't, well, I don't know. How do I know what number squared? How would I figure out what number squared plus nine times that number is equal to negative 20? How would I do that? Man, I don't know either. As I admit it, I, I don't know. But what I do know is this. I know that the standard form of a quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, right? So when we're thinking about a quadratic, the solutions, when we're asking for solutions of a quadratic, we're saying, when does the height go to zero? So here are the possibilities. In this case of this parabola, now this parabola could be inverted, so it, this is a, happens to be a maximum parabola, but if it was even upside down and kind of flip on this hinge right here, we can see that this parabola, not because of its shape, but because of what it does, it crosses the x-axis twice, doesn't it? And if you don't mind believing with me that this parabola comes up and just kisses the x-axis one time right here, here it touches one time, this one comes up, makes an attempt, but never gets to the x-axis. So that's what we're looking for when we're solving. And we have tons and tons of methods for, for getting this job done. Getting this job done is a completely different animal. So all I'm going to do here is this. I'm going to use the additive rule of equality in algebra, and I'm just going to add 20 to both sides. It's a fair swap, right? So x squared plus 9x. I said I was going to add 20 to this side, so I'm going to add 20 to this side. And then I said I'm going to add 20 to this side, so if I added the 20 over here, uh, negative 20 plus 20 is 0, isn't it? Now, given some of the factoring methods that you know in algebra, you might be able to factor this. Here, we know that this value of a out here is 1, so we have x here and x here. Now all we need is two numbers. When we multiply the two numbers, we get 20. When we add the same two numbers, we get 9. And of course, those numbers are positive 4 and positive 5. So these are, the, these are the factors. So these are the factors of that. And if we want the solutions, we can just set those things to 0. So I really want to make sure that you get this idea that sometimes the best thing, often the best thing you can do is to just say to yourself, okay, this thing is not in standard form. Let me just put it in standard form and see what I get. Let's try one more example and see if that doesn't prove itself out a little bit. Um, oh, this one is much tougher looking, but then it gets really good, I think. So here's 5p squared minus 25 is equal to 4p squared plus 24. This looks horrible. <laughs> this looks absolutely horrible, and I admit that it does. So, because what this question is, is for what value of p is 5 times p squared minus 25 the same as 4p squared plus 24? For what, p what number can we put in here that would make these sides equal to each other? Man, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. But I do know this, and this is Einsteinian, if you don't mind, why I remember what's written down. So write it down, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Are we in that form? No. What makes me think that we should be in this form? Well, I look at the degree of the variable, and the highest degree of any variable here happens to be 2. So I know that it's quadratic. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to say, you know what, let me take 4p squared from here. And from here, 4p squared from here. And 5p squared minus 4p squared is just p squared. Isn't that right? And I'm doing this, taking my time at this, but, right? 4p squared minus 4p squared is 0, plus 24 is 24, isn't it? And then, and then I think what I will do is this. Oh, of course, right? I'm almost there. I'm one, 0 on the right-hand side. So I'm going to add negative 24 here. It's negative 24. And we get, right, p squared minus 49 is equal to 0. Now, hopefully you watched the other video I posted today, which is on 
uh, fa uh, quadratic equations factoring uh, factoring difference of squares and right and this is a perfect square p squared has a has a perfect root doesn't it some number times itself is p squared and what number times itself is p squared well p so p and then what number times itself is 49 is 7 so p minus 7 times p plus 7 is now equal to 0 and we have this thing factored out really really well so I hope uh, this is helpful to you what I really want to encourage you to do is just keep working on it keep looking for patterns I'm afraid that we've all been brainwashed by well-intended people that fast is better and I always say you know if I had to have brain surgery give me a really good brain surgeon instead of a really fast one and this stuff is worth doing well so I know that you will um, bye con Dios and if you haven't subscribed please subscribe